of students so today we will be starting with chapter 2 of our syllabus class as the basis of all computation the first topic here is the definition of a class a class is a way of binding or combining data and its associated functions in a single unit now what are member data and what are member functions Member data, also called as instance variables or attributes, are the variables which are declared within the class on which some operations are to be performed. They are also called as instance variables. The data members are declared along with their data types. The user-defined compound block which contains a set of instructions to perform a task is known as a method or a function. What is the need of the class? As Java is a pure object-oriented language, so none of the operations are managed without the class. A class can handle so many operations like data hiding, abstraction, polymorphism, encapsulation and inheritance. To access or execute the members of the class, we require objects of the class which are also known as instance of the class. Thus, it is said that classes are the basis of all computation. Now here is the syntax how we declare a class. First we write the access specifier, then write the keyword class and then the class name. We start the curly braces, then the data type of the variable and the instance variable 1, the next data type, instance variable 2 and so on. For the functions we write access specifier, then the data type, then the method name 1 and the parameter list in the parenthesis. Then within curly braces we write the body of the function. Next function is written similarly and then we put a brace to end the class. The example you can see here there is a class A in which the variables are x and y of integer type. There is another variable of float type m, another variable ch of char type. These are the member variables of class A. Now there is a function show, its return type is void and the access specifier is public. What we are doing here, we are accessing the member variables of the class, y equals to x plus 25, m equals to 75 and ch plus plus. So this function show is accessing the member variables of the class. Now we are ending the function show and end of the class a. This is how the various variables and the functions are declared inside a class. The next topic is primitive data type and composite data type. The variables declared using short, int, long, float, double, char, byte and boolean data types are called primitive data type members of the class. Whereas we all know that a class is a composite data type. Since it contains many primitive data type as its members. So composite data type is what? Which comprises of primitive data types. So the variables within a class are divided into the following two categories, static variables or class variables and instance variables. The variables which are declared once for a class are known as static or class variables. All the objects of the class share these variables as only one copy of such variables is available in the memory. For example, if we write the keyword static, and then we declare a variable x of integer type. So this variable will be declared as static. If we declare many objects of the class, all the objects will use the same copy of the static variable x in the memory. Only one copy will be made in the memory and all the objects will use the same copy. Instance variables, the data member of variables declared within the class is known as instance variables. These are available for every object of the class, for example, int mn. Since no static keyword is used, so it will be called as instance variable. Have a look at this example. There is a class abc. We have declared an instance variable x here. A static variable of character type ch has been declared. Another instance variable mark has been declared of double type. And another static variable of double type has been declared as role. This is how the static and the instance variables are declared. Only difference is the static variables or the class variables are having the keyword static. 
Now comes the methods or functions within a class. The methods or functions defined within the class to execute the data members of the class can also be subdivided into static methods and instance methods. Now static methods are those methods which start with the keyword static and can use only static variables. Look at this example public static void show. It can also be written as static void show. Public keyword is optional. Whereas the instance methods are the methods which can use both static as well as instance variables. Public void show or void show. There is an example which shows the two types of member variables and methods within the class. Class name is sample. We have declared static variable m and we have declared instance variable as x. Now there is a static function show here and an instance function display. If I try to declare the values, initialize the value of x and m inside the static function show x equals to 76, this line will give an error. Since x is an instance variable, it cannot be used inside a static function. But if I declare the values 100 to x and initialize the value 13.67 to m inside the function display, this will be valid because an instance function can use both type of variables. Next is scope of a variable. The access range of a variable within the class is known as its scope. It covers the following rules. The instance variable is accessible within the class that is inside all instance functions. The static variable is accessible in all the instance as well as static methods of the class. The variable which is declared within a function is accessible within that function only. Such variables are called as local variables. Now, the next topic is objects as instance of the class. An object is an identifiable entity with some characteristics and behavior. Moreover, to access the members of the class, an object is required. An object name should not be a keyword. To create an object of a class, the syntax is first the class name is given, then the object name is given equals to new class name and parenthesis. To access the data members of the class, the syntax is object name dot data member name. To access the member functions of the class, the syntax is object name dot method name and in the brackets we have to give the parameter list. Now I have given a small assignment for you to do. Please read it carefully. Difference between primitive data type and composite data type. Give an example. Explain local variables, class variables and instance variables. What are the different primitive data types? And there are two programs. Please do this assignment in your notebooks and we'll discuss it in the class. Thank you students.